Hello and welcome to another segment where we talk about putting a late model Chevrolet V8 engine in an early BMW sedan. I'm Wayne Powell, the head geezer here at One Geezer's Garage. Uh, after the first two segments where we talked a little bit about the engine and a little bit about putting it on a test stand and, and actually making it run, I got some nice feedback from some of you. And the questions uh, usually have been and the suggestions have been to add some more technical details, some more nuts and bolts about how we got it on the test stand, how we hooked up some of the wiring and the fuel system and those kinds of things. So I'm going to do uh, whatever it takes, two or three more short segments uh, to get into some more detail about that. Uh, in this segment, what I'd like to do is talk a little bit more about the wiring because that seems to be the number one question, the number one thing that intimidates people. Uh, about uh, how to how to make this thing how to make it run. Uh, wiring seems to be the big issue. I know for me too. Uh, when I first started thinking about this project, that was a major intimidation. I knew that there were aftermarket wiring harnesses that would solve the problem for eight hundred and fifty, nine hundred and fifty dollars. But I thought I know some other guys have taken the factory harnesses and made it work. So we'll see if we can't do that ourselves. Uh, Two things that make it uh, really important, I think, that, that you have to have if you're going to do this kind of a project, uh, you've got to have a factory wiring diagram. And when I went out to the local auto parts store to see if uh, I could find uh, a service manual that would have that kind of, of uh, wiring harness diagram, I couldn't find a Hilton, a Chilton, or a Haynes, I'll get those confused, uh, Chilton or a Haynes manual on the 2005 Chevy Trailblazer and, and uh, GMC Envoy. So I'd read and, and saw from a lot of places that the really the best complete service manual, uh, basically a factory manual with complete wiring diagrams and everything else you need to know about the engine and the rest of the vehicle that this engine came from, would be the so-called Helms manual. So I ponied up 135 bucks. And I not only got this baby, but I got this baby, and I got one more that I don't even have here in the shop because it's all body stuff and wasn't all that significant. One of these is called uh, Body Restraints Vehicle Control Systems and Accessories, which has a whole bunch of wiring information, and this one is uh, engine and transmission, and there's a bunch of very detailed wiring diagrams in here. So a couple reasons why this is really important. Um, I, I told you in an earlier segment that I got the factory fuse panel uh, with the engine and I got one of four connectors that go in the bottom of it. So in the book there's a diagram that shows the bottom of that fuse panel. It shows all the little pins where the connectors go. And I'm looking at this and then you can follow. There's a whole listing of, of what each one of those pins. Here's a connector one, C1, and and pin A1. Well, it turns out uh, I was trying to figure out where's pin A1? What does that mean? And I could see that there were little, they had little numbers on the diagram. There was a, a row, the, the rows were A, B, C, and the columns were 1, 2, 3, and so on. And so A1 or C, C2 and so on. And I couldn't figure out, well, how do I know which one is which? So finally I looked at the bottom of the fuse panel and sure enough, cast in the plastic, buried down inside where if I finally put enough light in there I could see that the, the numbers and those letters were actually in there. So now I can turn over here and discover that um, B5 on connector C1 is um, it's supposed to have a pink wire, it's circuit number 399, and it's ignition 1 voltage. So that means it's hot when the ignition switch is on. So that that's an immense help and, and probably saved me a lot of time uh, yeah, I, pay, I had to pay some money, but it saved me a lot of time just finding out how to use the fuse panel I already had. So, let's, let me show you some more of the bottom of that fuse panel. Okay, here's what the bottom of this fuse panel looks like. This is the connector C1, C2, C3, and C4. These all of these spade connectors that you see under here also have numbers, and I don't remember which ones those are, but it's clearly listed in the Helms manual. So this 
connector came from the engine. So all of these wires go back to the, to the uh, engine control module and on to other places on the engine. Uh, I didn't get these connectors from the salvage yard, so what I discovered I could do was take an ordinary spade connector like this, and now I've already forgotten which place it went. Uh, this happens to be just a ground wire. Here's the, the problem. Some of these fit quite nicely, and they go on and they stay on, and others, like this one, uh, want to fall off. So sometimes you have to take a pair of pliers and crimp those a little bit to keep them on there. This is not the greatest way to do this, but it certainly works from a temporary standpoint. So for example, here down in the bottom of this, if I can see these letters, this is uh, F3 in, uh, in C3. So this is pin F3. This happens to go to the fuel pump. And so I've got a temporary label on here to remind me what the number is and where it goes. It comes back, so when the key is on, some of these other circuits are then powered. Those are the kinds of things that following the Helms manual, following those wiring diagrams, um, eventually you can figure it out. It's just not that tough. It's tedious, it's time consuming, but you just kind of take one circuit at a time, one wire at a time, and pretty soon it all begins to kind of fall in place.